بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمد ونصلي على رسول الكريم أما بعد Obesity, gluttony will become common. People will give preference to their desires more than controlling their desires and giving preference to the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this body is an amanat. We have to be very particular. The tongue to be used for the dhikr of Allah the eyes to see the greatness of Allah, the ears to listen to the tilawat of the kalam of Allah, each organ to be used in submission for Allah. If we're not going to look after it now, then there will be consequences. So if a person can start the day, our routine would be to start the day with honey, the rewite in Mishkat. If you can get a honey which has the following ingredients and it is available in the market where it is pure honey, preferably mountain honey with pollen, pupa, propolis, beeswax, royal jelly and with that to add manuka honey. That's the first thing to have in the morning. Obviously the grading is very important on the manuka. Then secondly after that honey water but it should be Warm, not hot enough to destroy all the nutrients, but warm. To add into, into it lemon, olive oil, coconut oil, and these all should be cold pressed. Then whether it's in tablet form or loose, to add it into this water, it is available in a tablet form. Be careful for specifically having veggie caps. To add cinnamon, curcumin, black seed, very important ginger, apple cider and uh, if we have a habit of making nabis at night then your seven ajwa will come in place where you will drink this with that water also if Allah gives one tawfiq then make it a habit morning when you're drinking this to add zamzam water and to read seven times suratul fatiha with the niyat of shifa Zahiri external and Batini internal. And the seven ajwa is we go to different amils and we look for different cures. Nabi Ali Salatu Wasalam has given us a prescription, seven ajwa. So you can use that seven ajwa in your nabis at night. If a person wants to drink the nabis, otherwise the ajwa on its own. Then when we sleep we have a habit of putting oil in our hair. So that's a very emphasized sunnah. Nabi Ali made a specific cloth because of so much of oil that was used. If we can make a ma'jun, a combined composition of olive oil, black seed, coconut, almond, argan, aloe, etc., then we can do that. Then in the hadith, Nabi Ali used to floss. So flossing is important. Nowadays we have the Floss, which is in a string form, a toothpick in the olden days, but make it a routine every day to floss, use miswak. If a person has to use toothpaste, then make sure it's from organic plant extract, it's fluoride free, paraben, SLS, synthetic colors, petroleum, glycols, etc. All these, they are very normal, harmful ingredients in your normal toothpaste. And it is available in the market if we search for it. If a person's teeth are lost, he cannot read Quran with Tajweed. Likewise, it causes a lot of inconveniences. Then the ears, at least once a year, if not once in two or three years, to have it checked up. There is a wax build up which can cause infections. Then you have a daily routine of exercising to fast Mondays, Thursdays, 13th, 14th and 15th of every lunar calendar. Nowadays there's a new thing called, uh, which the West has taken on. And on one of our travels also we came across a person who was quite obese. And he tried every diet on earth. And dieting is another topic which we're not going to get into. But most of it are scams. All we need to do is 
one third food, one third air, and one third water. People don't drink water nowadays at all, and we overeat. So whatever you dish in out, there should be another two thirds of that left. So uh, he tried everything. He exhausted all avenues. Then eventually, now recently, when I was there, he went on to intermittent fasting, which in Dean we say fast. So that is daily routine. He's slim, he's healthy, he's fit. And everybody around him says he does more work than everybody else. So if you want to know the secret to good health, Nabi alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, has guided us for the best of dunya and akhirat. We've got the best, best deen, am I the best Muslim in practicing? Then when our eating habits also, don't be in a habit of eating two meats on the same dastar khan. If you have chicken, only chicken. Likewise, don't eat too much meat every day. So, at least once a day if we have it, it is fine. Imam Ghazali said, La yuadib ala akli laham. A person shouldn't be habitual of constantly eating meat. But his advice was four times a month. And you should say, Kana salaf yafaluna dhalika. This was the habit. So in today's times, we might say proteins and we have our excuses, at least not more than one meat in a day. Hazrat Ali Karim used to say, Man tarka lahm arba'een yawman sa'a khuluquhu. A person who leaves meat for 40 days, his character becomes spoiled. Waman dawama alayhi arba'een yawman qasa qalbuhu. And for 40 days, if you are habitual of eating meat, then your heart will become hard-hearted. A person will become very hard-hearted. So, we have to be khairul umur awsatuha to be moderate in everything. As it's sahal tastari rahmanullah say, ihfadu uqulakum wa ta'aduha that protect your minds, protect your bodies, protect this amanah that Allah has given you and utilize oil because that is beneficial. So as mentioned previously also, the what does him in fat? So oil in the hair, oil in those days they used to use different oils for rubbing on the body. But fat itself is not harmful, the latest research, and that's scientific knowledge. Once upon a time, eggs and other ingredients were harmful for a person who has certain diseases. Now it is beneficial. Likewise, fat was harmful. Now it is beneficial. So moderation. Then we shouldn't be in a habit of eating late at night. It's very harmful. Sleeping late and getting up late is not the quality. The people of Iman is la samurata ba'ad al-isha. To sleep early, get up early. And very detrimental, if Allah gives us tawfiq to speak about it, is sleeping after fajr, before sunrise. Or even sleeping in the morning. If we have to sleep after Ishraq chast, we can sleep. But if we can avoid it and have Qaylula. So the Sunnah of Qaylula has left the Ummah. So even if it's one minute and we don't have time, five minutes, it's a siesta. Then generally after meals, people have a habit of eating fruits. Fruits should be eaten before meals, likewise salads before meals. And if we need to snack around people, grab a chocolate and a sweet, then let us restrict ourselves to healthy alternatives like dates. Let's see, dates needs to be washed because of the chemicals that are used nowadays. Organic dates are very rare to find. Likewise, nuts, there's a lot of salt, unhealthy salt. So try to uns unsalted nuts. Then olives, figs. So there are a lot of all other alternatives. So we need to manage our eating habits. A person should not sleep on a full stomach because that has his arms on its own. And it has been said, that digest your food through salah and dhikr means engage in amal and don't sleep on a full stomach. 
because you will become hard hearted. As a Sufyan Thawri, when he used to eat and satiate himself, Ahyaha, he would make sure he would stay awake the entire night. So that was their habit, that to digest food, they digested it with amal, with gush, with tilawat, with ta'alim, with uh, infiradi amal, ijtimai amal. وَإِذَا شَبِيَ فِي يَوْمٍ وَاسَلَوْ بِالصَّلَاةِ وَالذِّكْرِ And in the day also, if he did consume, he would engage in salat and dhikr. So amal is an alternative. Sitting down in front of the screen will make us screened. It uh, reduces all benefits. That's why the Mashaq used to say, La ta'kulu shahwat. Don't eat your shahwa, your ambitions, your base desires. Because we're doing what we want to do. And regulating our eating habits, regulating bad habits are important. فَإِنْ أَكَلْتُمُوهَا فَلَا تَتْلُبُوهَا If you ever have to consume something that you like, nowadays, whatever we love, we eat. The Mashaq of the past were very particular not to feed the nafs. So they said, if you consumed it, don't seek it. And if you seek it, don't have love for it. Don't engage in it. Don't make that your routine. So the, the pious people, the people of Basra, they say, there was a story of one person who desired bread with fish and he never ate it. And he said he won't eat it because he wanted to control the snuffs. So for 20 years till he passed away, he never ate bread with fish. So some people seen him in a dream and asked him, Mother fa'ala Allahu bika? How did Allah treat you? So he said, La, I cannot describe ma talqani bihi rabbi min al-ni'am wal-karamat. The favors that Allah has bestowed upon me, I cannot enumerate it. Kana awalu shay, kana aw. وَلُشَيْءٍ إِسْتَقْبَلَنِي بِهِ خُبْزًا The first thing that Allah entertained me with was bread with fish. So either we fulfill our desires here or we fulfill our desires in the akhirat. Abu Suleyman Darani Rahmatullahi say تَرْكُ الشَّهْوَى مِنَ الشَّهْوَاتِ أَنْفَعِ لِلْعَبْ مِنْ سِيَامِ سَنَةِ Waqiyamiha, that to leave your shahwa and your desire is more beneficial than fasting for a year and making ibadat. Why? Because we are, even when we are fasting, we are fulfilling our desires. We are having a grand seri, we are having a grand iftar, we are having a grand post iftar, we are having a grand pre seri. So it's food upon food, we eat more. And abstain less. So we are feeding this nafs. Then one topic which is fast food. And that we'll need about three or four, maybe even five series. But we'll skip that for now. Inshallah, whoever needs to do research. There's a book called Fast Food Nation. And what the all-American meal is doing to the world. Likewise, there are other books. On the harms of fast foods. From the farms, from the seeds and the hormones and the pesticides from the meat and the vaccines and insulin and different other preservatives and processes that go on the primary just before we even get it then the, the, the store itself, the taharat, the cleanliness then the person making the food are they a Muslim, a non-Muslim, are they in wudu, in a state of wudu, it will affect us the person making the food is in wudu out of wudu, where they read salat, where they don't read salat. One person reads very high spiritual heights. And he told his mother, his mother said, it's not because of you. He said, no, it's my sacrifice. After a while, he lost all his nuraniyat and he was on, on, on the bus. So he came to his mother and complained. She said, didn't I tell you, the day you told me it's you, I stopped making your food with wudu, making dhikr, dua for you. That was the consequences. So the person... Are they engaged in dhikr? Then the place, أَحَبُّ الْبِلَادِ اللَّهِ مَسَاجِدُهَا The most beloved places are the masajid and the most hated places are 
Aswakuha, the bazaars. So imagine that food that's made in the worst of places, in the marketplaces. Then the ingredients. So nowadays it's all about money. So the oil, how many times we use it? The containers, the utensils, how many times? What type of utensils? So we put ourselves in that predicament when we go to these places. We say the pious people never ever ate out. If they were traveling, they took their own food, and if there was a need, they would buy fruit. And even when they bought fruit, they were so particular, they would choose the fruit that was behind so that nobody sees the front ones. So they didn't get a fruit that was affected by Nazar and the evil eye. So the food we eat, halal, is very important. That's primary. And then secondary, tayyibah, wholesome, nutritious. One person came to Ibuzuk and said, I'm inclined to sin and evil and ma'asiyat. And he said, look at your eating habits. So fast food takeaways. If a person goes in Jamaat and they reach a very high spiritual level in the olden days when they should go to the Khankas, and a person should get kush and go in a wajd, in a, in a high ecstasy, they would make him walk in the marketplace. That was sufficient to bring him down. And if his spiritual level was on the next level, then they used to give him a cup of chai, one cup of tea from the marketplace was sufficient to eliminate and wipe out all his new that he gathered. So the bazaars, the marketplaces, let us try to abstain, eat out at the least. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the reality. Like we said, we could have went into the harms and there's a lot of books have been written on that. But man jadda, wajada, whoever strives, they will find. Another thing which is quite common is sugar nowadays. Now the sugar that we get in our marketplaces, and if we look at statistics of uh, the increase from 2001 now, it's phenomenal because literally everything has sugar. It's an unnatural substance, it is processed industrially and it's used from sugar cane or sugar beets but they use chemicals such as sulfur dioxide, phosphoric acid, calcium hydroxide, activated carbon and all the nutrients, the vitamins, the minerals, the proteins, the enzymes every beneficial nutrition and nutrients, illa mashallah, has been removed and we've got everything that is unnatural Everything that is unnatural. And uh, consumption has tripled globally. They say in just the US alone, the average person consumes close to 40 kilograms of sugar per year. That's 20 teaspoons of sugar per day. So we have the natural sugars, the natural alternatives. We need to uh, resort to those things that are beneficial, that are uh, nutritious. So some of the things that sugar harms causes insulin resistance because a, a diet that is high in sugar and carbs, it leads to chronic high sugar levels. Then it crowds out the nutritious foods. So the, the eating these highly processed sugar, ice creams, chips, fried food, burgers, cakes, pizzas, it's... Uh, which we, we are undernourished and the nutrition that we should be getting, we don't get it. It oppresses and suppresses the immune system where our bodies cannot fight infections. It's a cause of obesity because of fructose, which is a sweetener, and it causes heart disease. It uh, increases the cholesterol level. It increases and in chances of tooth cavity, tooth decay. It uh, Fructose causes a liver disease, it's a cause of diabetes, it's associated with cancer, Alzheimer's disease, it causes more hungerness because of leptin, it causes depression, blood flora, mineral deficiencies, macular degeneration, it causes wrinkles, it, uh, it accelerates old age, causes inflammation, decreases IQ, metabolic syndrome, osteoporosis, cataract, oxidative stress, it causes oxygen, which it's another topic on its own, causes kidney disease, high blood pressure, promotes acne, aggravates psoriasis, etc., etc., etc. The list is endless. So you are what you eat. The for today is 
that a Tajir, a businessman who is trustworthy, truthful, he will be with Anbiya Siddiqeen Shuhada. So business dealings, let us evaluate our businesses and see that there's no element of compromise.